Hello again and welcome to uh, my workshop for another of Harry's training videos on Jetty. Uh, and this is turning out to be episode two of a video I made a couple of weeks ago in which uh, somebody had asked me if I could do a program for a push button on his transmitter and he wanted it to be able to do a, a short press of the push button to do one thing but a long press to do something else. And I managed to work out a way of doing it using the uh, logic switches and the times in them. But I did say it, it's very critical on getting your, uh, you know, point ones of a, a timing absolutely correct or the switches wouldn't work and blah, blah, blah. And I did say that it would be much better if, if this was done through a Lua script. And lo and behold, Dave McQueenie has written a beautiful Lua application to do just this short press or long press. Uh, I say it's beautiful because it's not just a short press. You can have one short press, two short press, three short press, or a long press. So we've got four different things can be announced or servos or controllers controlled from this application. Uh, I certainly wouldn't use it to control anything that uh, could affect the flight. I'm not even sure I would use it to control things like retracts that somebody might want to. But it's certainly very suitable for things like light controllers or any other, you know, um, nice little scale details you have of that nature. So how do you get it? Well, in the first comment below, I have got a link to the uh, Dropbox that Dave has made available. And you can download the zip file from there. Or who knows, perhaps sometime in the future, it'll be available on Jetty Studio. Don't know whether it will or not. I'm making this video in October 2020, so yeah, you never know. might be somewhere in the future. Also, this is version 5 of the Switch software, because Dave showed me his uh, version of it. And I said, ooh, that's great. Um, can I get it to do this? And can you make it do that? So he kept uh, revising it to my uh, various selfish little demands and it's a outstanding little app i do like this what's its advantage for me well uh there are times in flight that i i want a particular piece of telemetry information announced and if you put it on the trigger switch you can have several different pieces of data uh, for instance if you were gliding you could have it announce the height and the speed and the um, vario reading and your receiver voltage. But in general, <clears throat> you only want to know one of them at any particular time in the flight. And you don't want to listen through the whole thing of all four of them, especially if it's doing something like the speed announcement. By the time it gets to it, you've changed speed completely or whatever. And this will allow you to just select the one reading that you want. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so I find this a very useful little app. Uh, so you download the Dropbox file. It's a zip file. You right click on it once you've got it onto your PC and select extract all or unzip or whatever the menu comes up on your PC. And you will find that you get a folder and a file. And you copy and paste that folder and the file into the transmitter's apps folder. And once you've done that, you can go into applications down to user apps press plus and here we are dfm for dave mcqueenie's initials switch so that's the one we want lovely now we can set it up and you can either press the programming dial to go straight into it within user apps or having installed it you will now find it's got a line to itself in the menus okay so choose your switch or push button I will choose my spring-loaded switch as I don't have a push button. There we go. Right, and here we are, are the four things. A one short press, a two short press, three short presses, and a long press. And then you can set the units that you want and the number of decimals it will read. Okay, so I've got just a simple receiver with a, a MUI 150 uh, electric telemetry sensor installed just so we can... Have a look at a few things. So let's go and select one short press. What will we have? Let's have the MUI 150 voltage. And at uh, two short presses, I will have the current. 
and three short presses, I want to run my lights controller, which will be represented by this servo here. So I select function. And for a long press, I will have what is in effect Q value. It's somewhere here. System battery current. It was there a minute ago. Where have you gone? Oh, there we are. So I keep going past it. Receiver 1%. Okay. Now, most of this should now already be running. Um, if you go into units, what will happen is that eh, it's pretty straightforward of things like voltage and current percent. That's uh, very much system stuff. But if you've uh, selected things like your airspeed, height, that sort of thing, where these come in a variety of units. It could be feet, meters, yards, miles an hour, meters per second, whatever. The system, uh, the app, I should say, has been written so that it will default to the units that you have selected in sensors and logging. We just pop out of here, see what I mean. Timer sensors, sensors and logging set up in here. You know, if you've got a Vario and GPS and things uh, and you select uh, in these bits, to give you the relevant menu, whether you want miles an hour, feet, and this kind of thing. And the app will pick those up and go with those. But you can, if you want, override it. If it necessary here, it would give you a thing to override in this particular model memory, not the app overall, just this particular model memory. It's persistent to each of them. And in decimals, you can choose uh, if you want it to read out the decimals. Uh, for example, I have uh, one of the older style Jetty Varios, uh, not the new Vario 2, which is a true XBus device, but the older one, which uh, doesn't turn up in Device Explorer. Uh, and it reads out your height in feet, point, something. So it'll tell you 103.2 feet. I don't want the point two, and I've checked with Jetty, and it cannot be turned off. Um, but in here, you know, you can choose whether you want one decimal place, no decimal places, two decimal places, what have you. Okie doke. And so uh, let's have a little look at this then. So if I do a short press, I should be told the voltage. Zero volts. If I do two short presses, I should be told the current. Zero amps. And a long press, I should get the uh, receiver percentage. Receiver one signal quality, 100%. Lovely. Now, three short presses will run the function. The function uh, means it'll turn up in the menus of all sorts of things, like um, assigning functions, as logic switches and whatnot. What happens if I give it three short presses? Uh, what it will do is effectively give the switch a blip of an output. It's uh, sort of, at the moment, it's at minus 100%. If I do three short presses, it will give the switch an output of plus 100% for 100 milliseconds. In other words, 0.1 of a second. Let's have a look at what that would do to a servo. Go to model, uh, function assignment, the servo is in channel 5, the lights, so let's go in here, assign, user applications, there it is, short, long, switch, three presses, lovely, let's assign that, say OK, the servo goes to minus 100%, so if I flick the switch three times, we will get a 0.1 per second blip to plus 100%, there. Not very useful for, useful for switching on your lights, is it? But I wanted to show you what it does. Incidentally, if you were to set that to the one short press, do think about this. There will be just a brief pause before the servo blips. The reason being, the app has to wait to see if you're going to do a second and third short press. So it's not immediate. So that's why I say useful for things like switching lights and little auxiliary functions. But if you ever wonder why is there that short pause between me doing my one flick of the switch and then something happens, do bear in mind the app has to wait to see if you're doing the second or third. 
OK, let's clear that out for the moment and go to Advanced Properties, Logical Switches. Let's enable the logic switch. And we'll come down and we're going to use the A on, B off logic switch. And I'm going to use this three flicks of the switch as the A to switch it on. And then I'm going to use three flicks of the switch as the B to switch it off. You don't have to use the same one on each. You could, for instance, drive three different controllers uh, on the one, two and three pauses and then switch all of them off with a long pause. It all depends what you choose as the A and the B. But at the moment, we've only set up the three as a function. OK, so we come up to Control 1 down to our user apps. There it is. So that will switch it on. And we're going to use the same one to switch it off. OK, uh, here we go. Uh, let's say OK to that. Now, if I do uh, one, two, three, nothing will happen. Why? Because like a silly Muppet, I still haven't assigned it to the control. So we go to Model, Function Assignment, down to our Lights, plus, and it's the logical switch, one. There we are. OK, here we go. Are you ready? Toggled. Our lights are on. Now we want to switch our lights off. There we are. Lights on. Zero amps. Oh, that was two. Ha, <laughs> silly me. Three. And we can still get, the, as you heard there, the other announcements. Let's do one. Zero volts. Two. Zero amps. Along. Receiver one signal quality 100%. And now let's switch our lights off with three press, short presses. There we are. Do bear in mind that with so many options here, um, you've got the chance of confusing yourself in the flight as trying to remember what's what. So don't try to be too clever in the workshop. I've said this before about setting some things up. What, what you can remember perfectly well in the workshop when you've set it up, but a month later when you're out at the airfield and you're flying the plane and your brain's busy flying the plane, can you remember what you've done and what happens? So I say keep it uh, reasonable. And you don't have to set up all of them. You can set up just one short or one long. You don't have to set all four items. But there you go. That gives you an idea of the power of this absolutely lovely app.